Welcome everyone to our deep dive panel for WOW Classic. Uh, I'd like to start with some introductions with these fine gentlemen with me and myself. I'm Holly Longdale. I'm the principal producer for WOW Classic. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I spent 13 years working on EverQuest. I started as a game designer uh, and eventually became the head of the studio for the EverQuest franchise. Uh, that said, I've always been a WOW player since beta. Um, so this is obviously a dream come true for me, and I'm thrilled to be here with you. Uh, I'm Patrick Dawson. Um, I'm the production director for World of Warcraft. I've been at Blizzard for 15 years now um, and have been on WoW for most of that time. Um, avid WoW player myself uh, and, and really excited to open up that dark portal again as we all step through it. And my name's Brian Birmingham, and I'm the lead software engineer on WoW Classic. I've also been at Blizzard for 15 years. I started on World of Warcraft. I spent about three years on Hearthstone as well, and then came back to the World of Warcraft team to work on WoW Classic. And it has been uh, a great joy to me to work on this team. There's a lot to talk about today. Yeah. So earlier we announced, yay, Burning Crusade Classic is coming. <laughs> um, but there's a lot more to it. Let's take a look at the features, because wow. I mean, wow, right? Wow. <laughs> um, I was so excited by playing Draenei and Blood Elves. I played both, uh, and I, I will say my heart's with Alliance. Um, mm. <laughs> 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 <I hate. laughs> um, and I also took up jewel crafting on my Draenei Shaman. I wanted to corner the market. Just the whole notion of having items with sockets and just exploring that whole system. I'm also a bit of a systems nerd. So uh, I, I completely lost my time for weeks in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Burning Crusade, I, I remember being there back then. I mean, it was our first expansion ever. Um, so all the new features was, was like this really cool moment of like what's coming next what's going to happen uh and, and one of the things that um you know was pretty impactful to the game was horde having paladins and alliance having shaman uh, i mean as an avid pvp or myself i remember uh going back and and trying to fight shaman i was alliance back then and just not understanding that class at all because my <laughs> team didn't have it so like i try to poly them and and then be like grounding totem. I didn't know what that was. And it's just like, why are Shaman immune to everything? I don't understand. That's not what you said. Yeah, no, but no, I did. I no, you said they're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I understood polymorph <laughs> druids, but Shaman, why? Um, like now I started to understand Shaman a little bit better. Uh, we got some of their benefits. Uh, you know, I actually like got to see totems being placed down on my side for once uh, <laughs> and got to see the frustration of dealing with Bubble Hearth on the other. Um, yeah, so, I remember when I was doing raids, we were always jealous of the Alliance having paladins <laughs> for Blessing of Salvation. Like people would be pulling aggro off me and I'd be yelling at them like, wait for three sunders. And, <laughs> and the Alliance is just like, no, it's no, it's no problem. Just, you know, just go, just go. Yep. <laughs> so hey, I mean, you know, we were upset Raiding like Razor Gore without Earthbind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really, even the playing field for both PVE and PvP, yeah. which was which was kind of cool. But but there were a ton of new features and, and, and just abilities with this too. You know, as we as we got to level seventy and got to experience new content, yeah. and new things. I remember one of my first experiences with understanding what it meant for uh, like like de designed by Blizzard, right? Oh yeah. Because yeah. I was an engineer, right? I wasn't a designer. I was I was working on like the live the live ops team at the time, and. Um, you know, I, I, I was playing my class, avid player of mage, and, and I kept, uh, I sent this long email to Tom Chilton saying like, hey, um, you know, uh, here's what mage needs. Uh, <laughs> Dawson Manifesto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a well thought out forum post. Uh, and, and, and what was in it was, was things like bring back a invisibility, let's get a threat dump in the class. And I didn't even necessarily tie those two together, but he was like, that's a pretty good idea, let's get mages invisibility. And, and just knowing that that skill was coming along with some other new stuff for mages like the Molten Armor, the Ice Lances, um, was just really cool to see all this new stuff in, in, in Burning Crusade. On the other side of that, I, I was really excited about Spell Reflect because I was really frustrated in getting polymorphed and being able to like reflect that back on the mage. As a mage, I was not excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> and there were even some PvE encounters that uh, that had abilities that you could reflect back. So I remember that was a lot really fun to kind of find ways to time that and uh, use it as a defensive ability as well. I was a hunter. Mm -hmm. I'm a hunter, now, a hunter. Actually, yeah, I've switched. <laughs> um, but I remember just chasing Beastmaster and just DPS, DPS, DPS. <laughs> yeah. DPS. Yep. That was it. That was the chase, yeah. Talking about that too makes me think of like the arenas and the arena system. Uh, that was a whole new world for, for us, you know, with battlegrounds and the way they worked before. Like the way the matchmaking happened, usually I was pretty competitive in PvP, so I, 
I would either get in there and stop the enemy team, <laughs> who was just there to be casual, or, you know, even though, like, we were a good team, we weren't, like, the best of the best. So when we ended up going against one of those teams, it was just like, well, geez, we're just getting stopped now. This is, <laughs> this is tough. Uh, arenas gave everyone an opportunity to play against equal-minded opponents, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were a little bit more casual, you get the opportunity to play against people who weren't maybe so competitive. Or if you were, like, cutting edge, go for it. Like, try to be the best of the best. Um, and, and what was great about that is it really just, it spawned an eSport. Like, yeah. that wasn't, yeah. we didn't design it for that. We just wanted people to have fun. Uh, but when we noticed, like, hey, everybody's playing this, everybody's, like, competing in this, people are watching it, we had to embrace that. We started featuring it at BlizzCon, so we've been doing it every year since. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. awesome. I think one of my favorite things to re recollect was the exciting zones that you would travel through. One of my favorite memories was actually in the, the first zone, Hellfire Peninsula, yeah. and it was... Uh, d adventuring around in Hellfire Peninsula, going around and doing all those quests, and always living in fear of the Fell Reaver, <laughs> because I mean, you'd be out there collecting parts from like a broken Zeppelin, and you'd uh, and you'd be fighting off your Hellbores, and then all of a sudden you'd see the screen start to shake, and like these thump, 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 and then. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, I gotta run, he's right on top of me. It sounds still haunts my dreams. Oh, I know, yeah, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Even in life, it's just feign death. And then the payoff when you later go to Netherstorm and they give you the quest, they're like, could you get me a part from inside the Fell Reaver? You're gonna have to kill him. Hmm. And you're like, that guy? Like that guy that used to terrorize me? They're like, yeah, I think you could take him now. And that was just, that was such an exciting payoff to be able to like uh, bring that full circle and go back and, and uh, see him again. For me, uh, I snuck into beta. I got really lucky because I, I could see the construction sign for some of the zones, and of course I ignored it uh, and, <laughs> and went and explored. So I remember running through Blade's Edge and just seeing dragon carcasses and skeletons impaled uh, in the environment, and then moving on to Netherstorm. I just was blown away, even from Zanger Marsh all the way through everything felt like its own world. And mm -hmm. just to be able to go through that and just the delight of it and the epicness of it. And then you come up to Area 52. That's what I love about WoW, is you can have epic, epic storylines and still find lightness in it. So I just loved it. I love it. I'm an explorer, so. You know, for me, I remember Burning Crusade really opened up um, a new gameplay type for me. I, I became a collector in Burning <laughs> Crusade, right? And it, it kind of started with the, uh, the Outdoor and Scryer rep. Because cause I got my outer rep all the way up, and then um, I was thinking about switching to Scryer, and people were like, you're insane, you don't, you know, don't do that. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I bet I can, you know, just to prove people wrong. Uh, and I did. Uh, and it, it was cool, it was really fun. But then, but then I started doing other things, like there were all these new like mounts and pets, and, and I, I went back and even got some of the older reps, like Thorium Brotherhood and Winter Spring. Um, but then like things like Netherwing Ledge came out. The world just opened up for me in Burning Crusade to, to really start my collection. Of course, we also had flying mounts, which I loved, and then decided to play with some friends on a PvP server, uh, and was running around Hellfire, uh, and uh, I, death from above, which is likely <laughs> just Pat. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Were you flying around harassing people, Pat? <laughs> I was getting a lot of honorable kills back in the day. <laughs> So uh, that's just a quick look at some of our memories for Burning Crusade, and that was 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that code has been hanging around for 13 years. And we're not just doing a save as Burning Crusade classic. Oh no, it's a lot <laughs> harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into some of those details. So one of the challenges has been uh, that we don't actually want to ship on the old code. And the reason for that is because it is, uh, it's got a lot of bugs and, uh, and difficulties with the architecture that we don't, wanna, we don't wanna have to deal with. But we do want that old data. And we talked about this when we did the original launch of Classic was how the data is really the thing that describes how the game is supposed to be played and what things are supposed to happen in it. And so we wanna bring that old data and we wanna run it on the modern code, the same as we did for Classic. And uh, there's like 750,000 rows of data <laughs> that we have to go through and convert from their old formats to their new formats. And uh, fortunately, we have really talented engineers, and uh, we run automated scripts that go through this. But even after we've run these scripts, we have to compare them with, you know, with how it used to behave and make sure that we've actually done the conversion correctly. And then there's even some things that are making it more difficult this time, like the fact that we've made a couple of minor changes or bug fixes in the classic data, and, uh, and we want to make sure that we keep those as we're going into Burning Crusade. So we have to merge those changes with the changes that happened with the Burning Crusade originally and make sure that we have a coherent set of, of changes that, that make sense to, uh, to bring us from Classic into the yeah. Burning Crusade. 
there's an enormous amount of time spent looking at, okay, this is how it came out now. Mm -hmm. We have a reference client yeah. that is the original. That's right. We actually, we do use the old code for that. Yeah. So like we still have it. We just don't want to ship on that anymore. But we have like the old code with the old data and knows exactly how it's supposed to behave. So th those things work together and we can bring that up internally and take a look at it and say like, okay, this is how it, how it was back then. This is exactly what it used to look like. And we do sometimes find things that um, are bugs we still want to fix. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it will tell us like, oh, this thing is not a bug. This is actually the intended behavior. Or this is something we, we don't really remember right. There's a tendency to, to want to chase your own memory. Like, I remember yeah. it being like this. And it's like, <laughs> no, it's, it's not always exactly the way you remember it. Uh, everybody has that kind of human failing, even us. And so a lot yeah. of times we'll have, have an argument about, I remember it this way. Well, I remember it this way. Let's go and check. We can look. Well, you know, a, another reason to ship on, on the new code uh, is really just the, the years of stability, improvements, <laughs> and, and the fact that the world didn't look the same back in 2007 as it does today. Like, That's true. There, there wasn't cloud yeah. architecture architecture at that point. Um, I remember I, I had the privilege of being on the on, on that live ops team where I got to see what all the servers looked like and, and how it was all architected. And to pull back the curtain on this a bit, the way it was <laughs> is everything was its own own like server, right? Like they didn't really talk to each other very well. So each uh, each realm had 11 blades on it. And these blades were just bare metal blades and like one blade was for Azeroth, one blade was for Kalimdor, one was for Outland. And then we had some for instances. And, and you know, back then what would happen with Without cloud is you would try to request resources and maybe a lot of people were running dungeons and so it would give you back things like transfer aborted <laughs> instance not found oh boy like we don't want to go back to those days so now we have we can take advantage of things like the cloud and not have those resource issues so so shipping on this new code is a big improvement in stability yeah and so we're basically we're weaving all these threads together we did finally get a build for burning crusade classic super excited uh, with the team gets together, we're preparing for a playtest, and we go to create our characters, and we see uh, this blood elf who, you know, he remembers the sun well. He forgot his pants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so everything didn't work the first time? <laughs> <laughs> what? I know. Yeah, I did mention, like, uh, we had to go Sabotage. through and check for problems in those conversion scripts. <laughs> so, yeah, sure, sure enough, uh, what's going on here is, uh, is that this guy thinks he's dressed, but he isn't. And you can see why he thinks he's dressed if you Does look down Does that happen his... to you a lot? <laughs> Only in my high school dreams. <laughs> you can see, the, if you look at his calves, you can see that he's got the, the, they're flared out because he thinks he's wearing boots. And what, the way the system works is we, uh, we first set the geometry up for all the items that you're supposed to be wearing, and then we layer on various images that we call textures. And we'd use those to build up a single composite texture that's then wrapped around the geometry. But of course, in this case, when we were layering them on, none of the textures were assigned. So it just started with his, uh, you know, naked body, and then was going to go layer on textures and didn't find any. So it thinks he's dressed, and so it's removed from the underwear because it thinks it's put clothes on top but there aren't anything there. They're all just completely transparent. So it's almost like the Emperor's new clothes. He's wearing invisible clothes, only in this case, that's really what's happening. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, and then, of course, I wanted to try Draenei because that's uh, where my heart lies. I'm an Alliance girl. Um, <laughs> and uh, this Draenei looks to be uh, heads above the rest. That's not the Exodar. Yeah. No, <laughs> definitely not. It's done moral, right? It is, it's, and that's exactly the problem. It looks like the drain is too tall, but the real problem is that we're in the wrong place. Uh, and so, yeah, when you uh, when you go to the Dunmoreau character select screen, of course, the camera is positioned for uh, much shorter races like gnomes and dwarves, and so it's uh, about knee high on a drain eye. Mm -hmm. And then water. Mm -hmm. Really, Brian, we have water in Hellfire? Yeah, so, so uh, it turns out that uh, Outland has a funny, <laughs> uh, uh, unique feature that it doesn't have any oceans because <laughs> the water just all falls off the edges and goes out into space or something like that. I'm not sure how that works in uh, in the game universe. But, Magic. <laughs> but yeah, indeed, there, there's no ocean there. But we had accidentally flagged it to generate ocean, so we ended up flooding the entire world with an ocean until we uh, found that and turned it back off. <laughs> so through all of these processes, yes, we're obviously uh, we're fixing what is broken. Um, um, but also, we, we thought it was a good time to start uh, enacting what we call hashtag some changes um, to, to gameplay and, and how uh, things should work. Yeah, I mean, when, when you think about it, like, classic, our, our guiding principle was no changes. The goal was to provide as true-to-life, authentic experience of classic that we possibly could for the community. Um, and we, we, we accomplished that. What was interesting to me is to see this, this vibrant community that embraced it and then said, hey, uh, but we're not exactly the same as we were 15 years ago, right? And, and they're right. Like, it, the, the, the times have changed. The world has changed. 
Um, and so some of those things that maybe were out there that were um, not great and were warts back in the day is not something that we would want to ship again, mm -hmm. like something that is feels a little buggy or wrong or incorrect. So um, the idea behind this is let's provide what the Burning Crusade experience was without those warts. And this really, I think, illustrates the, the, uh, the difference is spell batching. We actually had a lot of requests originally for spell batching in that kind of no cha changes charge, mm -hmm. uh, where they said, hey, I remember when I used to be able to have two mages polymorph one another, and they would both end up polymorphed. And that's cute and fun, and I kind of like that. <laughs> and so we said, okay, well, we can put that back in. But the system that causes that is, of course, that the spells are batched up and, and processed in these you know giant batches. Mm -hmm. But over the last two years, people realized that what that comes with is about a half a second of, uh, of kind of built-in latency, where you push a button, and it doesn't actually take effect for uh, for that half a second mm -hmm. while it's waiting to queue up the other ones to go with it. And people were starting to find that frustrating. I talked to a lot of people who said they were excited about it when it first came out with Classic, but after they've been playing with it for two years, they're really ready to see it go. Uh, go. And we're ready to take it out too. So we're going to remove spell batching with Burning Crusade. That's, that's definitely great, because I remember like every two weeks I'd get a book report, Vanish is broken again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was because of stuff like this, right? Like yeah. if you vanish at the same time a fireball's hitting you, yeah. it's going to pop you out, right? Exactly. Like, and, and so we were trying to do all these tacky solutions to it. But the real answer is just don't, don't spell batch. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have the ability to do that then. So <laughs> glad we're doing it now. Yeah. You know, another one that I can think of is um, just how the rating community has matured, mm -hmm. right? Like, things were very different um, back in, in 2004, 2005 timelines uh, compared to today. So, um, you know, the, the rating community knows exactly what's going on, and they want a challenge. They want more of a challenge. So, you know, rather than always giving them, like, the last version of the boss, the final form of the boss, which maybe is been hit with a few nerfs. Uh, let's not do that anymore. Let's give them a more uh, challenging version of the boss. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example of, of like uh, Muru, right? Where the initial version of that boss had a lot of spell pushback. Um, and so like that made it really tough to bring casting classes to that fight. Uh, we did fix that pretty quickly and, 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 and change the fight to allow for that. Now that's a change we probably would incorporate in this, right? Like we don't want people to feel excluded or not part of being able to do to do a fight like that. But then probably a month or so after that we nerfed Mover's health. Um, th that doesn't need to happen. Let's just let's just keep it in the hard form. We can evaluate any changes we need to make after that. But uh, yeah, it won't just be like, hey, final form, we're not even gonna look at it. Let's call it a day. So Yeah. So how how did your mage handle the pushback? Uh, I, ju I just I just sat it feels on the bench. personal. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was the raid leader, so I got the shit she went. The one mage allowed to go. <laughs> that, was, that was honestly that's one of my favorite fights ever in World of Warcraft. That was a really really fun fight. That's awesome. Another change that we're talking about making is uh, along the lines of that uh, PvP balance and faction balance is uh, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, with Burning Crusade, uh, Paladins are introduced to the Horde, and Shamans are introduced to the Alliance, and that was intended to be a balancing of the factions, and let's, you know, make them even. And then they wanted to kind of keep a little bit of flavor of that faction identity, so they kept Seal of Blood on the Horde and Seal of Vengeance on the Alliance. It was intended to be equivalent power abilities that were just slightly different in flavor, but in retrospect, Seal of Blood was just so much better. Mm -hmm. And so one of the changes that we are going to make is we are going to give the opposite faction's seal to the other faction, uh, but we're going to do that at max level. So we keep just a little bit of that faction identity where Horde will get Seal of Blood at level 64 uh, on schedule and then get Seal of Vengeance at level 70. And similarly, Alliance will get Seal of Vengeance at level 64 and then their equivalent, Seal of the Martyr, at level 70. Another thing we want to talk about is uh, arena teams. When it first came out in, uh, in Burning Crusade, the arena team system only let you have the same number of players on your team that was the mm -hmm. size of the bracket it was for. Oh, so, right. for example, yeah. A 3v3 team could only have three players on the team. So if someone was like sick or unavailable one night, you couldn't play. And that felt really frustrating. So we're definitely going to go with like the last version of that where you could have twice the size of the bracket on your team roster so that you had alternates you could swap in and out. And, uh, and then that way, if, as long as anybody had participated in, I think, 30% of the matches, then they got the full credit for the week of participation. Yeah. So what we did, personal ratings versus team ratings? I think that came later, and we're also considering whether or not we want to do yeah. something with that as okay. well. Because uh, another thing that was problematic about uh, arenas was the way that the, uh, the ELO system was so inflationary. And so we're talking about whether right, or not yeah. we want to move forward with, uh, with converting that to something more like the modern MMR system so that it isn't... Uh, isn't as, as punishing to people in terms of like waiting hours for a match at the highest levels and things like that. And another change, uh, we, we're we going to uh, 
give players access to Blood Elf and Draenei early so that before we actually open the Dark Portal, so you'll have a chance to le level those up. That's definitely not something we did originally. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I remember I had a friend who was really frustrated <laughs> that the rest of us were all running around in Outland, and he was like, I'm still I'm back like, in like, Outlands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what yeah. is going on? Yeah. <laughs> when can I play with you guys? So yeah, I, I'm really glad we're doing that. Yeah. Doing that with pre-patch? Yes. Yeah, that's the plan. Yep. Very is, cool. yeah, pre patch will come out and you'll be able to go start your, your Blood Elves and yep. Draenei. And then content. So we've got some phases happening. Yeah. yeah. So the content phases that we got coming are exciting. <laughs> uh, we're going to start with uh, Karazhan and, uh, and Gruul's Lair and Magtheridon's Lair. And we want to start with just that uh, released because we found with Classic that people really enjoy that kind of gear progression. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the Tier 4 gear is, is with those, yeah. those raids. And we want people to have an opportunity to level up, catch up to their friends, and all kind of go through these things together. So as we unlock each chapter, we want to make sure everybody's had enough time to, to, to be part of that chapter. Mm -hmm. And the next chapter after that will be Phase 2, which will be Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep. Yeah. Then next we move on to Phase 3, which is Hyjal and the Black Temple. Um, and the reason that's a change is, of course, originally Hyjal was, uh, was available from the launch of Burning Crusade, mm -hmm. but nobody could really get in there because of the way the attunements work. So we'll unlock that as a later chapter alongside Black Temple. And then uh, that'll go with Arena Season 2 at that point. And then Arena Season 3 will come out alongside Zulamon with a little bit of catch-up gear for anybody who's taken that long to catch up. Uh, <laughs> it's an, another uh, smaller instance, a 10-man. Uh, and then finally, Phase 5 will be Sunwell and Arena Season 4. It's Tons been a very content. busy year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's an expansion with a lot of in it. A yes. lot in it. And so we spent a lot of time talking about Burning Crusade Classic and Burning Crusade, which is exciting. We're very excited about it. But there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot coming, and we want to yeah. walk through how this is going to materialize. Well, yeah. Really, the question is, you know, we have a diverse player base where people have a lot of different wants and needs. Um, and, and how do we get there? How do we get to, to the Burning Crusade? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the first group of people that we wanted to make sure that we were serving well um, is, is those people who do want to go to the Burning Crusade. We feel that most of the community is interested in this. They're going to want to do this. We want to make it simple and easy for them. Um, so how, how are we going to do that? As we said earlier, you're going to be able to make a choice. So we'll, we'll talk about and explore these choices in some detail, and I'll give you some examples. <laughs> so um, to start with, with uh, the current servers you're on now, classic live servers, are going to become what we're calling progression servers. And what that means is the servers that are live now will always unlock any expansion we release. So when we get to our patch day, you're going to be presented with a choice. Do you want to continue on into the Burning Crusade? or do you want to move to classic? So in that space, you're gonna do that for every single character. So for my example, I'm on Warm, Warm Rest Accord. Mm -hmm. So I've got a level 60, I am definitely taking that on through mm -hmm. to Burning Crusade, but I've got a couple of mid-levels that I know I wanna move with my friends. Those are characters I, I level with my friends in classic and I wanna continue that journey with them. We wanna make it as easy and seamless as possible to just get right into Burning Crusade, but there are options. That's, that's that's awesome. I'm excited to hear that. Uh, I, I know um, there's a lot of my friends, for example, who who maybe um, didn't really play classic when it first came out, right? And so now they're behind, um, and they're interested in playing the Burning Crusade. This was for a lot of people their their favorite expansion that we've mm -hmm. done. Um, we want to make sure that those people are served too, uh, and one of the ways we could do that is provide a a boost. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to people who are interested in coming back that maybe aren't interested in doing the, the classic WoW experience but really want to hop right into Outland as quickly as possible. Yeah, so uh, the team, we spent quite a bit of time discussing it because we want to make sure we respect the time of the people that um, have been playing classic for two years. But also, we want people to be able to enjoy Burning Crusade if they loved it the first time and maybe miss classic. So we are going to offer a level 58 bo boost for purchase, but it does come with some restrictions. So it's going to be one per account. Um, it's not going to be usable on Blood Elf or Draenei. Um, it'll have some dungeon blues. It'll have level 40 mount skill, no professions. It's the basics. Basically your Outland starting kit. That's cool. That's, I mean, that's a really great way to jump into the game for yeah. sure. Yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, I, look, I know a lot of people came back to play WoW Classic, and that's all they want. They, that's all they ever wanted. They, they're like, <laughs> you know what? Burning Crusade, that's awesome. I'm sure some people are going to love that, but for me, I came back for WoW Classic. Um, what 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 do they get to do? What's their options? Yeah, that was really important for us, too. Yeah. So um, we we had all sat down and discussed like how we should frame this. So when we get to our patch day, which is prior to uh, the Dark Portal opening, 
when I said before, like I'll go back to my example for Worm Rest, um, we will be launching Classic Era Realms at the same time as we do our patch, and you will have that choice. So when you make the choice to go to Burning Crusade Classic, or you make the choice, like on my example, my level 40 druid, I want to move that character to Classic Era. And what Classic Era means is that those particular servers are going to stay in that era forever. So that is going to remain classic till the end of time. It's never going to unlock expansions. <laughs> You'll be able to make that choice for every single character. Do you go on to Burning Crusade or do you choose to go to Classic Era? It, let's say, you know, you're behind the times a little bit. You'll still be able to have that choice. There's, we haven't locked it to a time window. You're not going to miss the boat to Era. The choice sounds awesome. And, and choice in WoW is something that's meaningful. It's always been meaningful. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's something that's important when we look at the community that you're going to choose to go to the Burning Crusade mm -hmm. or you're going to choose to go to Classic. Um, you know, some people may not be comfortable with that choice. Uh, and while we think that that choice is important, um, we also recognize that there are folks that are going to want to play both, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, see, <laughs> right here. Maybe you have some stuff left to do in Classic that you wanted, and you want to keep that, mm -hmm. that character in Classic, but you also are interested, that same character wants to read with your friends. That's exactly right. See, So, so what, what does that look like? How mm -hmm. do we make that happen? So we're going to actually offer a paid service to let you make a copy of your character. And I know, like, a copy is a big deal. So, like you said, like, this is something mm -hmm. we don't want to make uh, just an automatic choice for everybody. Everybody. But I know that for me, it is it really is going to be like that that pull to go to both places. So I want to be able to say like, you know what, I'm willing to pay some money for this. I want a copy of my character that lives in Classic Era forever, while I also go to Burning Crusade with that mm -hmm. with that character. And that way, I can stay with my friends who are really excited to go to Karazhan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited to go to Karazhan. I want to see my <laughs> hunter go through Karazhan. But if I'm missing like a couple pieces of my tier three set from Naxxramas, I still have an opportunity to go find a new guild there and and go through Naxxramas mm -hmm. again until I finish that set. We're going to be spending a lot of time communicating these details. So yeah. even as much detail as we're giving now, it's very high level. There's going to be a lot more detail to come. So uh, keep an ear out. But with that said, uh, so Pat, mm -hmm. when's all this happening? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is soon. Yay! Um, so, so yeah, this is something that you know is important to get. Pe people are still playing through Next Ramus. We want to make sure that they have enough time to do that. Um, but what we are looking at, uh, this, this will be happening in 2021. Uh, for sure, we are committed to doing Yay. that. Um, and what we're looking at is, is starting the beta rather soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that beta will go up and we'll get that running. The community can come and participate, help us out. Um, we'll start to hear some feedback on the things we've talked about today. Uh, if there's any adjustments we need to make, we want to make sure we have a long enough beta period for mm -hmm. that to happen. Uh, and then we'll get that out to the players so you can all enter the dark portal. Yay! Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so any final, final words? Yeah, I just uh, well, I, I just talked about the beta, and you know, I, I will say just to the community, you all uh, have been so instrumental in making Classic the success that it has been, um, and you will be equally instrumental in making the Burning Crusade a tremendous success also. Um, so please get in that beta, play, <laughs> give us your feedback. We want to hear all about it. So um, enjoy, welcome, and let's have some fun. Yay. Yeah, and it's been the highlight of my professional career to work on WoW Classic and have the support and love of this community. Uh, it is really special <laughs> to me, and I'm really excited to be sharing this with all of you uh, in the Burning Crusade. Yeah, and for me, um, I'm, I've been playing Classic since it, it launched, um, and I wasn't working at Blizzard then, um, and it's changed my life, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, from me and the entire WoW team, uh, we want to thank you for bringing Azeroth to life for us. So we will definitely be seeing you in-game in whatever flavor you choose. <laughs> and until then, stay Classic. <laughs>